Hey guys, we're going to do a quick set of Cornell notes um, on how to draw force diagrams. So uh, this is going to be drawing force diagrams. That can be your topic. Drawing force diagrams. Okay, now this is actually going to be pretty easy um, and you guys will be good at it, but I want to just write down a set of steps first. So you can follow these steps uh, if you're having a, tr a hard time getting started. So step one um, is going to be to just draw a diagram of the situation. So draw a diagram of the situation. Okay, sorry, I know the handwriting is bad there. I'm kind of hurrying through this. Um, okay, so we draw the diagram of the situation. Um, we, we did that a bunch in our lab the other day, so you guys are already kind of good at that. Now, two, and this is an important part, is we have to identify the receiver. Identify the receiver. Remember that we said the other day that the receiver uh, is the object that receives the force. So whichever one is getting the force, we're only going to have one receiver for each diagram that we draw. Okay, so once we've identified the receiver, the next thing is we're going to draw the forces. So we're going to draw, draw an arrow for each force acting on the receiver. Okay, so it's important that you see that we're only going to label the ones that are acting on the receiver. Um, so, you know, if it's, if it's irrelevant to the receiver, we're not going to label that. And the other part is we're going to label each arrow. So you guys just learned about all the force symbols. Um, so that means you're going to label it as either, you know, FG or FE or FN etc. So one of those, so you have to have one of those labels on each force that you draw. Okay, now the fourth and final step that you're going to do um, is that for each force, for each force, comma, you're going to identify the agent. So we learned yesterday that for every single force there's a receiver and there's an agent, okay? So you've already identified the receiver and then for each force that you're drawing, so if that's, you know, FG, you have to identify the agent for FG. Um, and then if, if there's elastic force also, then there's going to be another agent for the elastic force. So you're going to list those out to the side. So let's take a look at how this might, might look. Let's do a little example. Um, I'm going to take a picture real quick. So, um, hi. Um, all right, so this is the sheet that you guys are going to have in front of you next. Uh, now, when you guys do this, we're going to use the stuff from the lab that we did yesterday. Use that. Use photo. Um, so we're going to do, do this for the lab. So we're not going to do the hanging book right now. But instead, let's imagine that, oh, so instead of the hanging book, let's imagine that it's a man pushing on a box, okay? So we have to have the floor, we have a box, and then we've got like a little stick man pushing on the box. Okay, um, so if I've got that, then my receiver... I have to label my receiver first. This is a really important part, okay? My receiver here is going to be the box. So that was step one, which was drawing the diagram, and step two was labeling the receiver. Okay, now I want to think about all the different stuff that's acting on the box. So first off, I know that there's gravity pulling the box down, and I'm going to label that F G. Now, it's not falling through the floor, so that means that there's also normal force pushing it up. That's F in. Now, I've also got a force uh, from the man 
that's pushing, and that's FA, that's our applied force. And then the last one, um, if you guys can think about this one, all right, there's a force pushing back this way that makes it hard for the man to push, and that is called friction, FF. So there's actually four different forces going on here. So let's label all these now. So I said F, G, F, N, F, A, and F, F. And so I want to say, what's the agent for each one of those? Well, F, G, the agent is almost always the earth, okay, because the earth is what creates gravity. Now, normal force, that force that's pushing back up this way, that's always caused by the surface. So in this, surf, in this case, the surface is the ground. Remember, you can have more than one normal force. We don't in this, though. Um, now, F, A, so my applied force, um, the, well, the thing that's, that's, that's causing that force is going to be the man. Okay, so the man is pushing on the box. And then finally, this friction force, okay? Um, so the friction force, the agent of that, is going to be, um, we're going to say the box slash the ground, because it's the contact between those two surfaces um, that causes the friction. So we actually can sort of list this as like a double agent there. Um, okay, so that's all you're doing. You're going to go back and you're going to do this for, all, for four of the different um, examples from our lab the other day now.